Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE on the ground. Covering KubeCon 2016. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hello everyone, we are here live in Seattle for KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. This is theCUBE special on the ground coverage of what's going on in the developer community. And we have two great guests from Red Hat. We have Joe Fernandez, Senior Director of Product Management, and Clayton Coleman, Architect the Number. Two contributor in the individual pool. It's like it's gamification. Contributor in Kubernetes. Welcome to the Cube. Thank thanks you. for coming by, yes. and thanks for supporting us. Really appreciate it, uh, Clayton. Num your big contributor behind uh, Brandon Burns, who's uh, obviously you guys are lem luminaries in this community. Still early though. Go back two years ago. Kubernetes was kind of like this cult. You know, <laughs> uh, people saw the orchestration challenges, kind of in the OpenStack world, overlapping in within the software world, and now it's like the fastest growing component, mainly driven by this clear vision that cloud native and containers are booming. Yeah, and it's um, it's very much about the application, and I think that was the thing that brought everyone together and has contributed so much to that rise is, um, when you put these patterns together, you're trying to make applications run well, everybody knows what it takes to, to make applications run well. When you see that, when you see it happening, um, you instantly see the value, and I think that's really been what's exciting about it is, everybody's come together and people instantly see the promise and they want to get involved. Um, and it's, it's grown immensely, this is a huge... Uh, For the folks community. that are watching this who probably couldn't make it here because they had to shut down attendance because <laughs> the fire marshal's ass, which is very <laughs> rare to let in these open source events to let turn people away because the mainly it's around venue because it's really inclusive. What's the keynote like? What are some of the sessions? Can you just you know spend a minute talk about some of the color around the show here? What's the session like? What's the big topics of conversation? Well, I'll take that. Yeah, so you know, we've been involved obviously with Kubernetes from the start, uh, from from two years ago. Um, what we're really seeing here now is you know the things that are needed to to have that widespread adoption in the enterprise. So you see uh, a number of startups as well as uh, large companies like you know Red Hat, like Microsoft, like Google, uh, getting involved and really uh, working on different areas. Whether that's areas around you know how do you manage Kubernetes in an enterprise environment. How do you enable different types of application workloads? How do you address concerns around security, around usability, and so forth? So, you know, we definitely feel the energy in the keynotes, but we also see a lot of energy in the breakout sessions and what's going on in the individual booths. Yeah, even in the hallways, I mean, I think there's been a huge number of people I've spoken with already today um, around how they're deploying Kubernetes, how they're deploying OpenShift, um, challenges that they're having in integrating, um, excitement about new features and new ideas. Um, it's really been um, one of the most dynamic uh, programming conferences I've ever been to. And there's a lot of users here too, so it's an awesome, the number two contributor is the individual at, at large component, Google's number one. The ton of users out there, so there's their hands are getting on the product, they are deploying, yep. but you guys are, you know, in number one in the enterprise in terms of open source and, and the history of Red Hat, you're dealing with customers every day that have to operationalize Kubernetes. That's the number one thing we're hearing is, okay, rah, rah, this has got some lift in the industry with the community right now, so this is looking like it's going to clear the runway, clearly, mm -hmm. on Kubernetes, so that's great news for everybody. But now, getting into the enterprise, challenges, what do you guys see as drivers and inhibitors? Well, so, um, I think very early on, when we saw Kubernetes, we said, great place to run applications. But the flip side of that is you have to be able to understand how to keep those applications running and to keep the lights on. And so one of the things that we had experience in at Red Hat is working with enterprises, understanding the policy and security, um, the kinds of requirements that really ensure that not only can you run you know, one or two or 10 applications, but you can run thousands of applications. And so um, over the last two years, we've focused on OpenShift and in the Kubernetes community on bringing um, that L, uh, the enterprise side, how to uh, run and rely on these clusters, um, and it's really what we do. Yeah, and, and uh, I like to think about it in terms of use cases. You know, we have a lot of customer meetings, a number of conversations. Everybody's talking about digital transformation. Nobody quite knows how to get there. What's the first step? Um, but really, it comes down to how are they going to evolve their applications for maximum agility? So you see a lot of sessions around microservices architectures and evolving for more traditional monoliths. Containers is a good match for that. Kubernetes is an enabler of both new and existing application architectures. You also see uh, companies focusing on portability, right? They want to be able to not only architect the applications they the way they want to, they want to be able to run them in different public clouds and different private clouds mm -hmm. or virtualization platforms. So the portability of, of the Docker packaging format and you know, containers and platforms. So like, phase one is yeah. set the table exactly. for microservices and the concept of cloud native. Yeah, so build, build the applications the way you want, run them where you want, 
and then tie that together with process. So things like DevOps and continuous deployment, continuous delivery, um, and really, you know, those are the, the, really the three areas where we get into the most conversations, and they're all sort of interrelated. And I think they're all really enabled by uh, platforms like. So, Kubernetes. Joe, I got to ask you a question because you guys have OpenShift, which is a platform as a service layer. I was in the hallway. I won't say the name of the person was because yeah. you might know who it is, given maybe the comment. But um, they said the, the platform as a service is really. Um, is a, a bastardized concept right now because what Kubernetes is freeing up is the notion of a multi-cloud from past to Kubernetes. Right. So I want to get your thoughts on that. Do you agree with it as uh, that statement? And two, what does that mean for yeah. things like OpenShift? And how does OpenShift fit in with Kubernetes? And why not have customers just go alone with Kubernetes? So, so actually, in fact, what OpenShift represents is it's basically our enterprise distribution of Kubernetes. This is how we bring Kubernetes, which is essentially an upstream project, uh, to enterprises as a supported product. So OpenShift has been around since 2011. Uh, it was you know, competing in the PaaS space with other platforms like Heroku, like Cloud Foundry. Um, all of the platforms used containers, but containers were sort of underneath the covers. You didn't really, they weren't really exposed. Uh, but the, you know, but the, you know, the drawback to, to PaaS systems was they're, they're always very opinionated, right? They, yeah. they, they kind of limited you to a certain type of patterns and, you know, those were codified in things like the 12-factor app. Um, and they didn't really fit, you know, the majority of applications that customers were building. Well, well we also the inner cloud thing too, you have now a diversity of clouds. Exactly. You kind of have legacy constraints that or handcuffs, if you will, based exactly. upon they didn't even need them. Exactly. And it kind of grew uh, on its own there. Is that kind of freed up with Kubernetes? Well, or? that's what, yeah, exactly. Is that so the hope not, or is that the reality? To, yeah, so what, what we saw in 2013 when, when the Docker project launched, you know, Red Hat was one of the first vendors that saw the opportunity to standardize that containers layer. And then as we started talking to Google about the work that we were both doing in that project, they, re, they you know, sort of, saw the same things we did, which is you needed an orchestration layer to manage those containers across all yep. these servers, across the different clouds. And at that point, we essentially rewrote, so OpenShift 3 represents a full re-architecture, everything from the operating system to standardizing on Docker, which is the container runtime, to standardizing on Kubernetes, uh, and then, uh, you know. So you focus more with, with the past layer, with OpenShift, given the clarity of some of the industry dynamics kind of sorting themselves out, exactly. containers becomes kind of de facto standard. That, that's right, so, so when, when customers consume OpenShift, they can consume it at a highly, in a highly abstracted way where they don't, may not even know that it's containers or Kubernetes running their applications, but they can go down to direct, ac directly access like the Kube API, the Docker API. So we don't, we eliminate that sort of, uh, you know, block on terms of uh, opinionated, uh, making the platform too opinionated where customers yeah. can't do what they want to do with it. So. And I would say um, when people talk about Kubernetes, a lot of times we talk about containers, but it's really not about containers, it's about applications. And I think what I see of in Kubernetes uh, is the continuation of the idea of Linux as the first application platform that was truly open source, that was truly vendor neutral, um, taking that to the next yeah. level, which is, well, what is the vendor neutral cloud application platform, and it's Kubernetes and OpenShift. It's right? really, it brings that kind of the freedom aspect of software development, that's the ethos of open source, right. which Linux has proven. His, you know, just the longevity of Linux yeah. is uncontested. You can't really debate that. And people right. may say Linux has opinions, but at the same time, just like OpenShift and Kubernetes, we have those opinions, but we like to choose your own opinions to bring your own um, code for ISVs and vendors to work yeah. equally. And that really makes it an open platform, an open, e open ecosystem. It's a proven model as well on the open source side, but now on the innovation side where well, there's always conflict, Clayton, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Right now, Kubernetes represents probably the first shift above the DevOps line that allows for much more broader development uptake in terms of freeing themselves up from under the hood network stuff. Right. So, you know, plumbers are becoming machinists now, developers are now completely independent. So that's the, the goal, right? That's the end right. game. Where are we on that progress line as, you know, and what's your vision and how would you talk to other developers that might be watching this and saying, you know, what does this mean for me and my future? I think we want to make as many of the tools that are available for developers to accomplish what they actually need to get done, to build applications, to, so, to serve customers, um, to make revenue. Um, those challenges um, benefit from abstractions. And so every, every tool we have in Kubernetes, in containers, in microservices, build systems built on top of that, and, um, and all the systems that sit around it are really 
about empowering the developer to get their job done as quickly as possible. And this is just making cross-cloud um, application development easy. At the end of the day, um, it'll really depend as well on how operations teams, whether that's the developers themselves in the DevOps model, or the people who run the infrastructure like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, or um, the operators in the bare metal clouds yeah. in their own private clouds, they're the ones who need to be able to ensure that all of this is safe and secure, and that's hard. In the spirit of the politics, because it's election day of this historic <laughs> election, trickle down economics or trickle down uh, dynamics of what's going on here. Kubernetes, in a way, is a forcing function below the stack to get their act together. That's right. I mean, in a way, if you look at it, if the developer community can organize around it, yeah. it clarifies a lot what needs to get done. The Absolutely. hard stuff. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, our VP of engineering, Matt Hicks, did a, a session here yesterday, and he was talking about modern applications need to be able to take care of you know, dynamic infrastructure, scale out infrastructure, infrastructure that may not live in your data center, may live out in the cloud. How do you do that, right? So obviously you need Linux. It's Linux hard is, as hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not easy. So, so Linux is at the core of that, right? So, um, you know, at the core of, you know, modern applications, modern infrastructure. Uh, but then, you know, how do you go beyond a single Linux server to basically, you know, span that across across a cluster, across your data center, across multiple data centers. That's the type of stuff that we're working on in the Kubernetes community. And then as Clayton mentioned, uh, unlike virtualization or, or things like uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, containers is really about the application. How do you abstract and, and enable application development versus how do you just abstract the hardware? Joe and Clayton, thanks for spending the time to come on theCUBE. I'll give you guys the last word real quick. Bottom line, what's the bumper sticker for your customers around them evaluating what you guys are doing here at KubeCon and Cloud Native Con? What's the, what's the impact to the customer? Yeah, well, Reddit? we're all about how do you bring Kubernetes, how do you bring all these great capabilities to enterprise customers, enable it to run anywhere, whether it's in your data center, whether it's in any public cloud. That's what Red Hat's about, and that's you know ultimately about helping them enable their applications. Clayton. I think it's about running every application in the world safely and securely. Absolutely. All right. The Cube, bringing you all the CubeCon coverage with a K, K-U-B-E, not Cube. So <laughs> not to be confused. This is the CubeCon, Cube at CloudNativeCon. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. More after this break. All right.